welcome back to another exciting episode here on Keep On Creating. I'm Mike from my t-shirt printers. Let's do this. So today we're back in Infinity Designer vectorizing stuff up. And today we're going to create this design from scratch. Now I know from the start Infinity Designer doesn't have all the cool functions and FOSS techniques that Illustrator does. But for the price number one, you can't beat it and in another way it makes you break down elements from like the real basic form to build them back up and that's not such a bad thing for a good foundation and graphic design so without any more bibble babble let's jump right in so to start off affinity designer for beginners all we're going to do is you're going to have your affinity designer loaded up like this and you're going to head on up to over here just where it says affinity designer and go file and drop to new it'll come up with this window I'm just going to select any of these. A3 is good for me. And you can just see it says color formats. Those are all fine. RGB, blah, 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 blah. And I'm going to click create. Then you'll be presented with this white artboard here. So this is the actual artboard that we're going to be creating our vector art onto. For this vector illustration, we are going to need a shape. So if we head on over to this tools menu on the side over here, you can see it's got these shapes over here. I'm going to select this one over here, which is the polygon tool. So I'm going to select that. Now, if we have a look up here where it says sides, I am going, you can either click on this and you get a little scroll bar which you can select your sides or you can actually just type right in here and I want six. So I want six sides. So if I click and drag while holding shift, if you don't hold shift, it gets a little bit warped like it is there. If you hold shift, it just drag, drags it really nice and proportionally. So that's what I'm wanting. I'm just gonna get my move tool, which is V. So if you hover over your tools, you get these little letters in brackets. So you see it says V there, that is my quick key. So I'll be using that quite a bit. I'm just going to click and drag that into the center so I can see exactly what we're doing. Now, once you've actually drawn your shape, so we've got six sides here. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. If you wanted more, you could just scroll up here and you can see it gives us more or less. So basically, as I said, we wanted this to be six. Now that we've got the start of our vector shape, I'm just going to head down here to our swatches. Now on the swatches, it says gray. I'm going to scroll down to where it says colors. In this colors menu, I'm just going to scroll all the way down. I want like a bit of a goldy color. So these colors at the bottom here, and I want it more on the yellow spectrum. I think, yeah, more on the yellow spectrum. So I'm going to want it somewhere around about there. Now to start off with, let's tackle these corners first. So I'm just going to hold spacebar and I'm going to hit command and I'm going to just click and drag so we can zoom in so we get a nice big close up of what we're actually doing. Okay, so let's soften out these corners. So when I'm talking about the corners, I'm talking about these little edges over here, here, all the edges going around our object. So I'm going to head over to our tool palette and you can see this corner tool over here or C. So I'm going to click on that and you can see it brings up all these little nodes. So basically you want to select all these nodes the easiest way to do it is just click and drag I want all of them just drag all over the whole bunch of them so now you can see they've all changed color they're all solid on the inside so now if I just click and drag inwards you can see it gives us these little circles and you can see what's actually happening it's starting to round those corners a, well, a little bit or a lot so we've almost got a circle again so basically we want them somewhere I just want them a little bit soft so I'm thinking somewhere around there would be cool so now you can see if I just click off that we've got these nice round corners okay let's head on over here to our layers palette I'm just going to make a duplicate of this curved layer over here so I'm going to click that and I'm just going to drag it down to where this little extra layer is here and it says add layer and it's just going to make another layer so I'm going to just label this one main shape and I'm going to label this one outline just so that we can know what we're working with in the different layers. So with the outline selected, I'm going to head down here to our swatches. I'm just going to make sure this fill is in the front and I'm going to select this little icon over here just to take that fill out. So all we left with is this black stroke on the outside over here. So now I'm going to head back up to where it says stroke and I'm going to drag this a little bit out so you can see it's starting to give us that little bit of a stroke on the outside of our graphic. So if we head back into our layers, you can see we've got our outline, which is now our outline, and we've got our main shape area. Let's get the next shape going. So I'm gonna head back over to our tools bar over here, our tools palette, and I'm gonna select this rectangle tool or M. So I'm gonna click on that, and I'm just going to click and drag a huge object like this over here. Now for this, I'm gonna want a white fill. So I'm gonna go over here, and you can either select over here. If it's not in your recents, it's black, gray, and there's a white there. So I'm just gonna click on white, and just flip that around that way and I do want a black stroke on this so we can actually see what we're doing so I've selected our stroke layer over there and I'm going to click on that so we've got that stroke still okay so 
just gonna get, select my move tool. I'm gonna click and I'm gonna drag it somewhere around here, just into the middle of it. Now, if we go to the corner, one of these corners over here, you see the arrow changes. It goes from our pointer tool and it changes to like a bit of a 45 degree and then it changes to like a bend. The bend is the one we're actually looking for. So if you just hover it in the right place, it'll turn into that bend. You're gonna click single click, hold, and then drag it. And you can hold shift at the same time and you can see it gives you the snapping, like 15 degree snap. So we want it to snap right there. If we head over to our layers palette, you can see it says rectangle over here. Now the fancy thing about this, or it's a very similar to Illustrator as a comparison, when you clipping mask something, you click this and I'm gonna drag it into this main shape over here. So you can see if I drag it over there, you can see that blue line goes all the way to the end there. But if I just drag it, you can see the blue line goes underneath where it says main shape and it pops into the main shape. So it's a bit of a clipping mask feature and it goes into that shape. So now what we can do, if you just double click this and you can just move it around anywhere within this shape. I'm just gonna undo that to get us back to the place that we were, which was um, around there. And I'm gonna deselect that. Now what I wanna do is I wanna fill this top section over here with a black. So similar to how we created this shape over here, we could just double click this, okay, hold Alt, click and then drag up and then you can see that's made another shape. And then you could just expand this out this way and what I'm gonna do is head over to our swatches. I'm going to flip this around, but then I'm gonna make sure our stroke is selected and click on this little icon over here so there's no color to that. Then in your layers palette, I'm gonna click this rectangle layer over here and I'm gonna drag it below our rectangle layer over there. And you can see where I'm putting it so that it's just in that same clipping mask just underneath it so it's all in line there. So you can see it's all We've got our black, we've got our white, and then we've got our main shape over here. Now, before I go any further, the most important thing to do from a beginner all the way to a professional graphic designer is save your file. Let's start adding in some text. So I'm gonna either hit T or you're gonna head over to your tool palette over here and we're gonna says artistic text tool. So you wanna select that. So first of all, let's get some text going here. Let's say creating. All right, so that's one layer of text. I'm just gonna scale that up. Oh, now when you're scaling up text, basically it works a little bit differently to shape. So if I click and just drag this without holding any keys like shift when we have to drag a shape out to keep it in the same proportion. If I hold shift while I've got a text object, you can see it actually warps it. So I'm not holding shift, I'm just clicking and dragging that and it keeps it proportion. So let's just drag it out to somewhere about here. Okay, so that's one layer of text. I'm just gonna duplicate that. I'm just holding Alt while dragging it. And I want the words keep, and I'm just hit enter on, oh, on, not on, on. Okay, and I'm gonna do the same. I'm gonna hold Alt while dragging it. If you don't hold Alt while dragging, it doesn't duplicate it. So now we want EST and I want 2020. Okay, cool. So now I've got my three bits of text. So let's just concentrate on this piece of text over here first. So if I've got this sort of in position where I want it, if I just hover over this little edge over here, you can see it gives me that up down arrow. So that's like your skew command. So it's SK. E W skew and I'm gonna click and I'm gonna drag that up here you can see what it's doing it's keeping it nice in proportion and it's just dragging it and making a skew so I want it somewhere in here and I'm gonna click and I'm gonna hover over this corner over here and it gives me that like 45 degree arrow option and I'm just gonna click and I'm gonna drag that in to here so I'm just gonna put it about somewhere over there. That's cool with me, okay. Now what I'm gonna do, let's draw out these little bits here. Okay, so what I want to do. Now in the design world, the best thing is to do is to keep things as much in proportion as size-wise as possible. Just keep it nice and consistent. So I'm gonna get our little square tool over here or rectangle tool, which is M, and I'm going to draw a rectangle almost the same size as this E little bit over here. So somewhere around, somewhere around about there-ish, okay? And I'm gonna pop that in over here. I'm gonna hold the Alt key down and I'm gonna click and I'm gonna drag it above it over here. Hold the Alt key down again and click and drag below over here, okay? Now I'm just gonna zoom out. So I'm just gonna click, 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 click. Okay, I'm just zooming out. So to zoom out, I've just hit spacebar, command, 
and Alt, and you see it gives me that little minus sign, so that's how to zoom out. Then I'm gonna select this line with our move tool, which is V, and I'm gonna hold Alt, and I'm gonna click, and I'm just gonna drag it up to here, and let's just scale that out a little bit so it's the same size, and I'm gonna drag that to there, and drag that to there, just to keep it nice. Now these, obviously, these fonts are exactly the same size, so this line matches this line, which matches the size of our line over here, and that's what we want. We just wanna keep things nicely in proportion. Okay, so with this keep on bit, let's just drag our move tool over and select this entire bit of graphic over here. I'm just gonna pop it in to somewhere around about here. And now obviously I want this to be white. So if we head on over to our swatches, and I'm gonna make it white, make sure you've got your fill selected. So I'm gonna bring that to the front and I'm gonna click on this white and now it's white. So let's just click on here and I'm gonna just scale that down while holding shift. Because it's got shapes in it now, I have to hold shift. If I don't hold shift, although it's still got text in it, it will warp. So I'm holding shift and I'm gonna drag it to there. Now, an interesting thing to do here is to skew this item. Basically what I wanna do is click over here where it says enable transform origins. And so if I click on that, you can see it gives me this a little bullseye point of view. So I'm gonna click and I'm gonna drag that and I'm gonna put it on this corner over here. Now we've all done the skew function already. So you can just hover over this corner and when I skew it, it skews from this corner over here. And that's what we want. So I'm gonna skew it from this corner over here and run it to about there. Okay, cool. And I'm just gonna drag that a little bit in to there. So you can see that's nicely there. And I'm gonna do exactly the same with this. So I've got my move tool. I'm gonna to just select all those objects there. Okay. And I'm gonna bring it to this corner here. Let's just scale it while holding shift. I'm gonna just bring it in there. Just zoom in again. Uh, I'm just gonna bring it to there, or about there. Okay. And in fact, let's just bring it up to about there because we'll scale from this corner here. So how do we do it from this corner over here? We've already got a little bullseye because we've enabled our function up here, which is enable transform origin. And I'm gonna click that little bullseye and I'm gonna put it in this corner over here. Now all I'm gonna do is hover over this edge, the inside edge, and I'm gonna drag that down until the point where we are happy that it's kind of running parallel to our line up there. So I'm just gonna drag it to there, okay. And I'm just gonna reposition it. So it's just nicely we'll put in that little area where I'm happy with there. So I'm just gonna select that off. Now that looks pretty cool as it is, but let's take this just a little bit further. So what I'm gonna do is let's get our pen tool up now. So we're gonna head on over here to our tools and you can see it says pen tools. So I'm gonna select that or select P on your keyboard and I'll bring up your pen tool. So now what I wanna do is draw a little bit of a triangle coming out over here. So I'm gonna click over here, I'm gonna click over here, and I'm gonna click back over here, and I'm just gonna close that shape off. So you can see now it's a closed triangular shape. I'm gonna head over here to our swatches, and let's make this black. So making sure our full is in the front, I'm just gonna select our black color over here, or over here in your recents, and you can see it's made us our black color over there. Now, if you just get your move tool, which is V, or you can head up to your tool, tool palette up here, and I'm gonna hold Alt, and I'm gonna click and drag that down, just by holding Shift, so it makes sure it's nicely parallel to the one on the top, and I'm just gonna make sure that's nice and evenly spaced. Should we do three or four of these? Let's do, let's do four of them. So while holding Alt, I am gonna just click and drag that. So I just dragged it to where they were touching, basically, one another over there. Now, with all those selected, so I'm holding Shift while selecting each curve, I'm gonna head on over here to our layers palette and I can see they're all selected up here. So if I click this whole bunch, single click and drag it, and just keep on dragging to see it goes all the way down and it goes into where our main shape is over here. Now in the main shape, obviously we want this within the main shape, so I'm just gonna pop it somewhere in there and you can see now all our triangles have basically dropped into our main shape. So they're not poking out here anymore, they're all within that shape. Now, what I'm gonna do is select all those ones again, all those triangles, curves, shapes that we just made, what they call curves, and they're triangles. So it's a, bit, it's a little bit of confusing. Anyway, so I'm gonna hold Alt, and I'm gonna click, and I'm gonna drag them up here so that we can see what we're doing. I'm going to head over to the swatches, and I'm gonna select white so we can actually see what we're doing. Now, if I just right click on my mouse, it brings up these little options here. So if we go down to transform, I'm gonna go flip horizontal, and I'm gonna do it again, and I'm gonna go transform again, and flip 
vertical and you can see it it gets to the angle that I'm looking for so we don't have to redraw them or anything like that and I'm just going to position them somewhere around about there you can actually bring them in a little bit so those points are just peeking in there so let's give our vector illustration here a little bit more of a pop definition so what I'm talking about there is we've got a solid color over here and we've got like a pop out color over here. So this black is contrasting against our gold. Whereas this top bit over here, this black is bleeding into our black. So it's just a big, huge clunk of big black space. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna select this outline over here or you can go to your layers palette over here. Now what's very important here is that we convert this to curves. Now the reason being is the computer or the program actually thinks that this still has a hard edge here. Even though we've made it round, we haven't converted it to curves. So it's still thinking it's got a hard edge there. So what I'm gonna do is head on up to layer and I'm gonna drop down to where it says convert to curves. And you can see it gives us a quick key over there, which is command and enter. So you just click on that and now it's converted it to curves. And what we wanna do is get this tool over here, which is our node tool. And with our node tools now selected, I'm going to go over here and you can see this gives us like a little bit of a line and a little bit of a zigzag line. I'm just gonna click over there and you can see it's added a little node tool, a node, a node, and I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna click and it's added another little node over there. So now with those two nodes selected, so I'm holding shift and I'm gonna select my other node. I've got this node selected and I've got that node selected. All these other little nodes aren't filled in. Now I'm gonna head on up here where it says action and you can see on the first little icon of here says break curve. I'm gonna click on that. So what that basically has done, if I just select my pointer tool, it separated this piece from this piece. So you can see if I select this side, it doesn't select that side up there. So if I select this side up here, which I want, okay, and I'm gonna to go to our swatches, and I'm gonna select, I want this color over here. So if if this color isn't showing in your recents and you're not too sure which color is over here, a fancy little trick is to just click on this little eyedrop tool and just click and drag without letting go and you can see it actually hovers over all this little areas over here and all the colors you've got on your screen. I mean, you can even go down here and it selects any color that you want from there. I'm wanting this exact goldy color that we've selected and I'm gonna drop it over there. Okay, and then I'm going to head back to swatches and click on that and you see it gives us our color. So now we've got a little bit more of a pop against that black over there, so not looking so solid. Let's start balancing out some color here. So basically these four triangles that we created up here, I'm just gonna double click on them and hold shift. And so I've got them all selected. I'm gonna head over here now to our swatches. There's our recent gold over there. I'm just gonna click on that and let's make them that color there. So that's nice gold breaking that up. So same down here. I'm just gonna hold shift with my move tool selected. So I'm gonna hold shift, click, 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 whoop, click and click. So I've got them all selected and I'm gonna make them white. So just make sure that your fill is selected over here. So we've got them as white. Now, if we wanted to break the colors up even more, I could just use our move tool, which is V, and just double click these little triangles here. I'm just gonna hold shift and select all of them. Now, with them all selected, I'm gonna hold down the Alt key and click and drag inwards. So you can see it's given us a whole another triangles, a whole another set of triangles again. I'm just gonna position them around about there, there-ish. And I'm gonna make sure that our fill is selected over here, and I'm gonna make them white. And I'm gonna do exactly the same with these ones down here. So with the move tool, which is this tool up here, or V, I'm gonna double click and then hold shift and select all my triangles that we created in there. And I'm gonna do exactly the same. So I'm holding Alt and I'm just dragging it inwards to about here. And I'm gonna make sure that full is selected to white. And I think that looks pretty cool. So that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed following along on this vector tutorial and you've learned some new skills. If you haven't already, go check out one of the previous tutorials on Infinity Designer. And with all of that, don't forget to follow us on our social channels. Stay safe, keep creating, subscribe, smash that like button, and I'll catch you on the next one. I'm out of here. Thank <laughs> you.